This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our Euler series. Today we will be taking a crack at Euler problem number 32 in Python 3. Uh, as you can see I already have the PyCharm editor open and I have made my base template file for this problem. Let's start at the top. The problem name here is Pen Digital Products. What follows is a definition of pen digital. An n digit number is pen digital if it makes use of all the digits 1 through n exactly once. For example, the 5 digit number 15234 is 5 pen digital as it uses 1 through 5 exactly once. Then we have a look at a product. where the product, the multiplicand and the multiplier all put together are 1 through 9 pen digital. So 7254 is 39 times 186. And if we put all that together we have 1 1, we have 1 2, we have 1 3, we have 1 4, we have etc etc. Each digit from 1 through 9 is used only once and exactly once. Then the challenge here is find the sum of all the products whose multiplicand multiplier product identity can be written as 1 through 9 pen digital. So it's uh, kind of like um, uh, palindrome products or um, things like that. Uh, we have a pretty arbitrary um, criterion to test our uh, values by. And if it fits this criterion, then we need to add it to our running sum of all the products, etc. etc. There's a hint here some products can be obtained in more than one way, so be sure to only include each once. Now, this is a bit of a fiddly problem, really. Um, not, not much math going on here, but there's a lot of um, bookkeeping to do in how you get to what values to test, which combinations to test and to check if uh, the result multiplication obviously works in integers but the result is easily test as a string more than as an integer so there's a lot of uh, typecasting going on and there's a lot of uh, as I said bookkeeping so I've worked it out um, I'm not going to program this live it's, it's a bit too fiddly for that and I've added a lot of comments Note that I also have a GitHub link in the description where you can uh, get through this file and read through all the comments again. Um, and the rest of the boilerplate is in place as well. So here is the uh, run method uh, that makes this file runnable, runnable on its own. Here is the run method that uh, hooks into our main pie in the uh, solutions um, or in the root of these, this PyCharm uh, uh, solution. And here is attempt number one, which will be our only attempt here. Um, at first I define a string that is pen digital, that has all the digits in, its, in their correct order. And I make a placeholder for the result that we want to uh, keep track of. So this will have the um, all the products where the product and the multiply and the multiplicand concatenated will fit the pen digital figure. So we are going to test um, numbers A and B and see if their multiplication results in a pen digital number and there are several uh, boundaries we can set for A um, when we look at its order of magnitude, so how big is it? So is uh, the, the orders of magnitude obviously um, 1 through 9 are one order of magnitude and going up an order of magnitude are 10 through 99 going up again is 100 through 999 etc etc so how many numbers are in our how many digits are in our number is the, the order of magnitude and 
if we have an order of magnitude 4 we multiply that by a number order of magnitude 1 the result will be 4 which totals 9 digits anything with more than 4 digits in it say 5 digits we multiply it by a 6 digit this will result in something of 5 digits and the um, we are looking for something that has only 9 digits so we have a multiplicand of 5 plus 1 equaling 5 resulting in well, nothing under 10 digits so we can um, mark off order of magnitude 4 as being an upper boundary for um, for our a value and we can in fact improve a lot on which we are doing here order of magnitude is going to range from 1 through 4 note that this is not included in uh, the Python range call so our order of magnitude a will range from 1 to 4 5 not included uh, note that this uh, as you can see here we are multiplying a big a by a small b and we will not be doing that we will be multiplying small a's with big b's um, therefore this boundary can be even tighter than that but the code below will take care of that now for number b in the order of magnitude for b the answer to our multiplication should be in the order of magnitude 9 minus whatever order of magnitudes we had for a and b so if I multiply a two digit number with a two digit number it will either result in a four digit number or in a three digit number and having that knowledge we can look at uh, a we can set up a proxy for b and we can check out if um, those two will mesh together to give us a nine digit result so we're not entirely sure yet which uh, order of magnitudes for b will uh, will apply here so we make a list of all the possible uh, orders of magnitude and then we're going to test them uh, they need to be between whatever order of magnitude we already have and the maximum order of magnitude that it could possibly have in fact going all the way up this uh, boundary will leave no room for the result itself but we will check them to see if that happens so the order of magnitude plus our proxy order of magnitude for b will be on the input side and then we know that the result will also be this big so that's why we multiply it by 2 instead of adding them up again uh, and we might uh, set before 2 digits plus 2 digits either 3 or 4 digits so for a best case scenario we subtract 1 to get a low bound and this will overflow at some point and we will deal with that again this needs to hit the 9 so then the um, if it does so then whatever proxy we took for our order of magnitude for B here is a possible order of magnitude is a order of magnitude which will which might yield a valid value now that we have the orders of magnitude out of the way we are going to run through all the numbers that are in one such an order of magnitude so here we can see that we initialize 10 to the lower bound and run it all the way up to 10 to the upper bound and if you don't see why this statement would generate all the numbers within this order of magnitude I suggest you create a dummy program where you do nothing but uh, make this run you just pick an order of magnitude so say 3 I want all the three digit numbers then copy in this bit of code and simply print out what values A will take you can see that it works because 10 to the power of something is exactly what uh, the numbers in our decimal system mean now that we have a um, value for A we are going to pick a value for B and we are going to look through each order of magnitude that B can have under this order of magnitude for A which we've determined here 
it's not dependent of A itself, but it is dependent on the order of magnitude that A has. So that's why we um, uh, that's why we determine the list before we get into the A bit, and this might have multiple values, so we need to run through them, each of them here. And B gets the same treatment as A here, so we pick one of the possible order of magnitudes and construct all the numbers in it. Then the interesting bit. Here's our pen digital candidate, PDC, which is working from the inside out. A placeholder string with three uh, possible place, places in it. Those places are taken by a, by b, and by a times b. Note that these at this point are all integers. The format string turns this into an actual string. So now, without any multiplication signals or equal signs in the uh, in the string itself, if this is a pen digital product, then the, the digits 1 through 9, say 4, 6, and 2 are uh, in the in uh, B and one three and five are in this one and all the rest are in uh, eight times B. Could happen, probably not, but it could. Um, then this string is nothing but a concatenation of all of our digits. We are going to sort it, and sorting uh, unfortunately doesn't yield a nicely sorted string, but it. Uh, works on the list, so it breaks the string up into a list, then sorts that list and returns a, um, a list with list elements instead of a nicely packed string, so we are going to rejoin all of the string elements into a string again. So now we have a string with a number of digits. If we've overshot, if a times b was uh, gave a, a result that was larger than uh, 9 digits total, Multiplicand plus multiplier plus product length. And uh, then we are done with looping over values for b. This order of magnitude will only give us uh, bigger numbers. So we break this and we get back to the next order of magnitude and start again with a smaller b. And then we check if um, our pen digital candidate actually matches the string we created at the very top with our and digits. If it doesn't match then we continue so we uh, take the next value for b and carry on and if it does match then we have the result here which was an empty carrier for whatever value uh, actually complies to the pen digital figure and apparently this does so we're going to append the product as said here in the instructions we want the product whose we only want the products for whose multiplicand plus multiplier plus product identity is pen digital. So here we stuff the product into our result list. We print out our result list and we feed the sum of the result list into uh, the return here, which will be printed nicely on the screen if you run mainpy. So I suggest we run mainpy. Problem 32 does not take inputs, immediately prints the answer onto the screen. And I can tell you right now, if you go over to Project Euler, Problem 32, and you enter this number, you will get the red cross. Now why is that? Uh, let's step back for a second and look at the problem statement. Specifically, let's look at the hint. Some products can be obtained in more than one way. Here is the list of products that is given. And lo and behold, right in the center here are two numbers which are equal. So we don't want this number twice, we only want it once. And that's an easy fix. If we convert the list into a set, then all duplicate values are automatically removed for us and running this for problem 32 and I'll focus on the wrong window in less than one tenth of a second we've run through I don't know how many numbers 
and we get the correct result if you enter this number over the project oiler you will get the green check so i said at the start it's a bit of a fiddly problem not too much math involved though it is um good to look at your setup for your um for all of your loops there's quite some looping going on that's uh good to look at um and how you can set boundaries for each of these loops. Uh, I've gone for an approach here where I take into account the orders of magnitude so I can control how big of a result I'm getting so I can quite easily check if I stay within the 9 character limit for the whole um, multiple for the whole multiplication thing and I can quit early if something crosses those boundaries so I think it's quite well optimized um, but still it's it's just multiplication casting to string and checking if all digits are present exactly once so I'm not I'm kind of on the fence about this one um, but there you have it there's our answer um, Check out my GitHub for more details about uh, how this was coded and uh, for the general solution. So for the um, main pie that I keep referring to, the also times our solutions. And I will see you again for problem number 33. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.